Hey guys, I um, am doing another tutorial, <laughs> big surprise, on how to use the DC Designs F14 Tomcats Autopilot. This is version 1.0.1. .1. If the plane gets updated and anything changes, I'll make further videos to, to cover the new updates when they, whenever they come. But um, yeah, I wanted to share this information. I'm not affiliated with DC Designs at all. I bought the plane. I love it. They did a great job. And uh, I found it a little bit tricky to learn at first because it's not as straightforward as you might think. So I wanted to share that information to save other people from having to struggle with it and do a million crashes because the autopilot can be a little bit finicky if you're not careful. <laughs> so um, yeah, I've also got other videos. I have one that's a cold and dark startup with a checklist if you want to go through that. I have uh, conventional nav aids along with an NDB approach one. Uh, feel free to check them out. You might find them helpful as well. They they uh, cover a lot of stuff that's not covered in this video. I highly recommend at this point, if you don't already have it, to go and download the GTN 750. First you go to www.pms50.com. It brings you to this page. You scroll down a bit. You have two options here. You can download the free version or the premium. I'm sure the premium is awesome. I just go with the free version for now, but sometime in the future I'll probably go with the premium version. You just click download and then you unzip the file. We'll go to it here. Select unzip. Then after you unzip it, you have to copy the unzipped file and paste it in your community folder. We'll copy it. And there's where my community folder is. Everybody's community folder could be in, in a different place, but that's where I'll paste it. And I always double check to make sure it's in there. And there it is. And if you open that file, this is what it'll look like so you know everything's in there. And that's it for the install. Let's get started. Okay, so we're inside the cockpit. I didn't touch any buttons. One thing I strongly re recommend is uh, go to General Options and under Ad Accessibility, Instrument Name Tooltips. Turn that on. I have mine to instant. You can set it to delay or you can leave it off, but it gets much more difficult with it off and I'll show you why because a lot of the buttons in this plane don't make sense right um, some of them do some of them don't but let's use this AWL ILS ACL switch when I put the mouse over it, it says approach mode right so what it says here versus what it is is two different things um, so with that out of the way let's talk about the next thing bugs you need to have knowledge of your heading bug, your altitude bug, and your speed bug if you really want to make this effective. I have buttons set up so I can change my heading bug with my joystick buttons that I have set up and it's quite easy. However, your heading bug, if you want to adjust it, if you don't have any buttons set up, you can just use it down here where it says slave and compass. You can dial that to whatever heading you want it to be on. Okay, Altitude is right here. To change your altitude you can roll it up or down I also have a bug on my joystick that lets me do it just a couple buttons one set for up one set for down and for speed what I've done you can adjust it here let's see if you can see the number because it's so okay it's, it's so bright in the cockpit here so it says 258 when I click let me see if I can get that shadow over it make it a little bit better for you guys hang on turn there we go Heart break is being set again. Okay, we have 258, right? When I go to dial it, watch what happens. Nothing. And it's because the autopilot for this plane has been made too complicated. I mean, it doesn't need to be. Right now, it's because it's on a managed speed mode versus a selected. There's a little arrow you can bring up down here if you put your mouse in the right spot. Click it, and that number changed to 117. And now I can dial it for the rest of the flight. Right, so just keep that in mind that if you ever can't adjust your speed, look for this down arrow right here. Yeah, and then you can adjust it again. I'm going to set this number to 200. And that's just a good number if you're going to do an approach to have it at. So, I mean, you can set it to 600 for a cross-country flight or whatever you want. But um, when you're coming in for an ILS or whatever, 200 is a really good number to have. A lot of uh, real plates like ILS charts and all that. They have speed restrictions of 200 knots quite frequently, so that's just good to have set up. 
So that's the bugs. What I've also done for mine, and just to give you an extra tip, was I use my arrow keys for my speed. So I've set it up. I don't use them otherwise in the sim. So my down arrow reduces my speed. My up arrow increases it, as you can see the bug changing on the screen. And uh, my left arrow turns my auto throttle off. My right arrow turns it on. So there's on. I'll turn it off. Okay. Anyways, those are things that might help you. If you set up buttons as those bugs, then you don't have to go use the most and try to find them later on when you're, when you're trying to fly. So let's get airborne, and then we'll turn on the autopilot. <clears throat> I hit this button here to center my heading bug. I always do that when I take off, even though I just kind of put myself a little sideways anyways to get the shadow on the screen for you. But let's uh, line up again. I'll center my heading bug. And we'll go. Increase the uh, power where it says thrust. And then once it gets to mill, I don't need full afterburners for this takeoff. I don't want to go crazy fast here. There's mill. I'm going to leave it set there. I think that just refers to military power. I'm not 100% I'm not sure what that actually means. V1 rotate. Positive rate gear is coming up. Maintain a nice uh, attitude. The scenery here is Sim Adams, um, Halifax. So I strongly recommend if you are flying around Eastern Canada or Atlantic Canada, Canada to uh, go with the Sim Adams scenery. It's amazing. They got a bunch of airports that they've done for here. Okay, so now I'm going to level off a little bit more it's recommended that you I'm going to bring my power back a bit so we don't overspeed because I, I want to stay roughly in the vicinity of 200 to 250 knots um, bring the plane so it's roughly level and to quickly simply turn it on you just go center your heading bug which we've done then we go here heading alt engage those three buttons turned on the autopilot it's following the heading that we selected it puts in the new altitude of whatever you're at when you hit the alt button down there and uh, and that's really it because we set up 200 knots in our speed bug I'm actually going to engage that now too so I hit this button here to auto and that gives us auto throttle so now we have our speed control that's going to stay at 200 knots. Our altitude is 2,500 feet. And our heading was what we selected in front of us after takeoff, which was still basically runway heading. So if I want to climb to 3,000 feet, all I want to do is take this alt um, bug, or I'll use the one on my joystick, and bring this number to 3,000. And it climbs for you. There is another one over here for vertical speed. Uh, if I hit control 3, you can see it. It's very uh, intermittent when it does and doesn't work, so I just recommend leaving it alone. You can experiment with it, but you'll probably get just as frustrated with it as I did because it's not reliable. So I just don't use vertical speed mode. Okay. And that's fine. You don't need vertical speed. This is... It, it climbs and descends at a really good rate anyways. When I turned on the autopilot and I hit those three buttons over there, you'll see Track, Select, and Alt. And if it was on heading mode, it would show heading select. See how I just changed that? But we'll go back, we'll keep it as track. They mean the same thing in this plane, so that's okay. Another thing you need for the autopilot to work is these three switches to be up. Okay, with these three switches up, then the autopilot will work. If they're down, it won't work. It'll be uh, all over the place. So just keep that in mind. By default, when you start up on the runway, these are already on. Very important for that whole system to work. All I did to turn on the autopilot was these three. I went heading, alt, engage. And once again, if we want to change our speed, we can go up to 250 knots. So I'll take the most down here. I can dial it. Or I could use the arrow keys that I have set up on my keyboard. And you can see it go up to 250 if I choose to do so. It's really responsive, really great uh, for when you're flying. Even VFR, if you're doing circuits, you can set this at like a, a one... 30 or 140 and you know until you're on short final then you can turn off your auto throttle but it'll keep you in check for speed 
So I, I do strongly recommend it. I'm going to change my heading now with the heading bug to a heading of 060. But look, I'm going to roll it off at 030 because the plane banks too much for a steep autopilot turn. You usually lose a bit of altitude. That could be corrected. I hope DC Designs does it. But the reason why I did this, I wanted to start correcting the bank before it gets to 060. And once it starts to roll back and the track passed it, I'm going to bring my, my bug to the 060. So that was my trick to, to solve that turn. You'll find little things that'll work for you, but you just got to you gotta play with the plane. It's not... Uh, it banks too steeply, and uh, that way you have to be ahead of the autopilot here to make it work. I think that could be fixed. There was a gentleman that commented on one of my videos, and I'll put the link to his video in, in my video here in the comments, or sorry, in the uh, description. But you can change the configuration file to make it so that it doesn't bank any more than, say, 30 degrees or whatever you select. And that seems to work. So I haven't done that. I don't want to modify any of the configuration files. I'm hoping that DC Designs addresses it with a simple fix. Um, and uh, that would make a big difference for how this autopilot works. All right, so if we were wanting to track, say, GPS, let's uh, let's do that. We'll, we'll load in a flight plan. So that GTN 750 I mentioned in the beginning, it comes up as a widget here. You click it, and this works on any plane, right? Because we don't have a way to enter a flight plan into the map here. This does it for us. So, you know, it's got its own moving map. You can see where everything is and, and whatnot, right? So clear that message and go back. I'll go to flight plan, set up an origin. It'll be CYHZ for Halifax. Enter. I got duplicate waypoints, but uh, that's just the way my scenery is. I don't know why. I'll set a destination. CYYG will go to Charlottetown. Enter. And I select one of the duplicates and it comes up. There's my flight plan. If you look on our map, I'll zoom out. With the range, you should see the white line, and that will take us directly from Halifax to Charlottetown. Okay? And you can look at it on the map here too. It, it, it did it all for us. So, what I'm going to do now is instead of intercepting this line, we're going to go direct to Charlottetown. So, if I put the mouse in the corner of this GTN 750, see it says direct to, and we can select the waypoint, click on flight plan, or it's Charlottetown, like I just did. And then I click Activate, and that gives us a direct two line directly to uh, from, from our location to the airport. So just give it a second to draw the line in. Or not. <laughs> Did that not work? Try it again. There we go. And we have our line. Sometimes it, it gets a little buggy, as with anything in Flight Sim. So if you do it twice, it usually uh, resolves any issues. It's, that's the first time I've ever had that happen, where nothing happened on the direct two, though. But that's funny. And if there's an update for this GTN 750, it comes up right on the screen. It tells you it needs an update, so that's good as well. Okay, so I got us roughly close to an intercept uh, of that track. The next thing I want to do, make sure we're in GPS mode. This switch here, it says Nav GPS. It's on the backward side, like it's opposite. That should be labeled properly, but it's not. So when it's on this side, it's in GPS. If I swap it over, it's in Nav. Let's go back to GPS, even though the, the thing says the opposite, it is in GPS now. And you want to hit this nav mode button right here. When you hit this one, we'll follow that track. So I'll hit nav and watch the plane start to go over and meet that other track. Right, so now we could follow this. You could have a complex um, GPS flight plan. Once you get on that track, you'll be able to um, use that to get to wherever you're going cross country so it's really useful to know that you can follow a GPS map around and go anywhere as you want all right so the opposite to that would be if we wanted to say fly a radial for example um, if you go to my conventional nav aids video it shows you how to do all that but basically you would still use this nav button but instead of um, having this on the GPS option, you'd click it over and have it on the nav. So that would be on nav, and you click this nav button up here, 
and you'd be able to follow a radio on the uh, from a VOR. All right. But up here, you can look to ensure that it's following the GPS. It says GPS LNAV. The other way, it would say uh, LNAV VOR. That's just stuff that I've learned with it. We're at 3,000 feet. I could climb or descend or do whatever I want. Um, but I'm just going to keep it here for the purposes of this video. And uh, let's do an approach into Charlottetown. We'll plan it out right now. So first thing I want to do is go back to the flight plan page. You can either select the airport and load a procedure from it. Or you can go right back and just hit procedure. Same thing. Hit approach. And we will load in the ILS-03. Our options are Pilku, Okobo, or Vicbo. We'll use Okobo because that's the side of the T. There's nothing for Vilri. And I don't want to go to Pilku and do a procedure turn. So um, we're still going to go to Vilri because that makes the most sense from our direction. But we're going to load it in Okobo, Vilri, um, Pilku, if that makes sense. So before I actually hit load, if I hit load now, it's going to draw us a line right to Okobo and the plane's going to turn and follow it. So I want to go down here and hit the heading button again. And that gives us track select and lets us follow the track that our, our plane is already on. Okay. So we're not going to change anything now. So we're following the track bug or the heading bug instead of the, the uh, GPS at this time. I'm going to load the approach. And to show you what I mean. Oh, I thought I hit load. Let's try that again. Load the approach. There we go. Now it actually loaded. Very uncommon for it to do all that in one thing. This is a Microsoft Flight Sim issue. See how it drew a line with a big curb going into the, the airport? That is not what we chose to do. Oh, you know what? I did it through the wrong waypoint. That's through, through Pilku and a procedure turn and all that. We're going to change it to Okobo. Load that approach. Still gives us a weird flight sim line that makes no sense, but like if you look at it in real life, you wouldn't have to do that. You'd just go right to Villery because that's what they would direct you to. Sometimes flight sim gives you a line that goes way out here to make a nice, you know, big circle curve to get there, but it, it's not necessary. And in real life, you'd be busting your uh, your track that that ATC tells you to go on. So we want to go to Villery which is this point right here. And what I'm going to do to do that is go direct to play plan, select Vilri, and then activate direct to. If it doesn't give you a direct to line, we just hit it again until it does. We're going to now select nav over here again. So the button that we selected before, it's going to follow the GPS track. It says GPS L nav here now uh, to Vilri. Our distance is 35 miles back. All right, so we got a little bit of time to go over some stuff. And for the GPS purpose of this, uh, this tutorial, that's done for now. I will say, if you look over here, there's, there's two differences with this. Ukobo is considered the IAF, which is the initial approach fix. And Villery is the IF, which is the intermediate fix. So what happens often in Microsoft Flight Sim is when you go to the um, intermediate fix, GPS takes over and says, hey, no, I want to go to the initial approach fix. We're going to start this approach from scratch, even though you kind of start a little bit into it at that intermediate fix. Real world, that happens all the time that you would go there. But in flight sim, they assume that you always want to go to this initial fix via their squiggly weird circle routes that they gave you, which make no sense. So um, you'll see that'll happen with this. And I'll show you how to avoid that. So right now we're just going to Villery. We'll keep it like that for now. But when we get close, that's where we got to be a little bit more careful. I will say that usually when you load in an approach with the GTN 750, it puts your frequency for your ILS into the uh, Nav 1 box. So there's really nothing else I'd have to do. But I'm going to show you the app that I use. I use an app called Flight Plan Go. I use it on my phone. And uh, let me record my screen on my phone to show you what I'm talking about.
Okay, so I click on Flight Plan Go, and uh, it's set for Halifax. We'll change it to Charlottetown, C Y Y G, and we're going to do the ILS 03. There's the approach plate. Frequency for the localizer is 1109, and yep, it is in that box, so we're confirmed for that. Our inbound track is 027 degrees, and uh, I will say that with this plane, the inbound tracks for the ILS are automatic. You don't have to dial in a course for that. It just comes up automatically. If you're using VOR, yes, you have to use your course, but for um, the ILS, you don't have to. Okay. So we're going to go... Let's read this plate. ILS 03 in the Charlottetown. 100 miles safe is 2,900 feet. Sector altitude in our direction is going to be 2,100 feet. And... Um, our inbound track is 027 degrees. We cross over the FAF at 1380 feet. Down to our mins for the ILS of 358, which is 201, which we would set in the rat out. See how it's a 75. So down here, there's an option you can change by VNAV. We want to make sure VNAV is off always, by the way. But it says VMIN. I'm going to increase that to 200. It goes up in increments of 25 in this plane. So we'll call 200 the same as 201. It's pretty close. Uh, missed approach, we climb to 3,000 feet, heading of 027, and uh, wait for vectors. And that's it. There's some special remarks about the missed approach during comm failure in real life, but we're in flight sim, so we're not going to encounter any of that. I'll post the uh, approach plate up here in the window anyway, so you'll have, have a good view of it. Okay. So, with that said, that's the app I use. It covers all the um, approach plates, and it gives you a moving map if you're in a real plane. I've used it in real planes many times. Um, you know, flying a Cessna around and you don't have a GPS, well, that moving map is perfect for giving you some good situational awareness. And, uh, all right, so we're coming up on Vilry on the map here. It's, it's a little ways away. I could increase our speed some more if I wanted, which I probably will. Let's change the weather, because right now it's too nice out for an ILS. Let's, um... Okay, I'm going to get rid of this map, because I don't need it. I just had to use it to program in the flight plan and, and the approach. If I zoom in... Or out, I mean. <laughs> you can see where our first, uh, where Villery's at. It's where this turn is. Let's change the weather. I have a preset I can use for IMC. Gives us bad weather. I'm going to make sure our pedo heat is turned on, which is uh, down here. Engine probe anti-ice. What it's called in this plane. I just turned that on so we don't lose any uh, speed indications or anything like that. 250 is actually a pretty good speed. We'll be there pretty quick. It's showing we're 14 miles back from Villery. We're at 3,000 feet. I'm going to look at that approach plate again. Um, we could go as low as 2,000 feet of Villery, but I think 3,000 is still a fair number, so I'm going to keep it there. The field elevation is only 167, so 3,000 above your uh, your uh, field elevation is, is ideal anyways for a nice, constant uh, intercept. So, we programmed in the ILS. We got the frequency here. Everything is looking the way we want it to. The next step I want to do, right now we're currently tracking the GPS ALNAV with our ALT set of 3000. So all we did was use this button to track that GPS ALNAV. I'm, I'm going to turn on this top ILS button, but do not turn on the bottom one. So click the top one. It sets it up track, loc, ALT. What that does, now for this plane, the GP, uh, the the DC Designs version, um, the track means it's still following your GPS track, not your ground track like you would expect. Okay, And the localizer, well that is for localizer, altitude is still controlled by that, but there's a glide slope underneath it which we'll consider armed. That glide slope will pop up into this box once the glide slope centers at the right time. So we'll consider this both being armed, but LOC has one more step to be armed because it pops up here and goes into a box. When the box disappears, then it's captured. 
All right, so all I did was hit this one switch after loading up the approach. We are still on GPS mode down here. And I'm not going to change that rate yet. And I'll tell you why, because I wanted to follow this GPS track. Okay. But because it's picking up the ILS frequency now, I see this magenta plus. That's our inbound track, our inbound course of 027 for the ILS. And it's already preset in there, so you won't have to worry about that. So watch what happens. We're... we're Almost five miles from Villery. This is where the GPS gets a little wonky and it's a Microsoft problem. But here's how to solve it. When you're less than five miles out and you're going to an intermediate fix, what you do is we swap that over now from uh, GPS to nav. I hit that button and when I went from GPS to nav up here it's capturing the localizer. See the loc is in the box. It's not captured yet but it's armed. The box disappeared that means it's captured. So now it's following the loc and our glide slope is armed below. So if you look at our GPS what's going to happen next it changed its route and went to the initial approach fix like I said that's what Microsoft wants it to do. If we had left it on GPS mode down there, the plane would have tried to go to this waypoint first. It would have turned towards it, done a big loop, and then came back in eventually maybe and did the ILS. So that's why I did it at those times. We're doing 250 knots. I'm bringing my speed back now to 200 at least, maybe even less, because you want to be at 200 or less at Villery normally. I'll even go down as far as 180. Glide slope is coming in. That's alive. One dot above, gear down, speed checks, landing gear is coming down. I'm going to center my heading bug now that I'm thinking of it. Now that our landing gear is down, I'm going to turn on the DLC, which is this button right here. And we're going to watch for this glide slope to center and capture. There we go. Glide slope will consider captured when it's in this box. And, uh, yeah, it's descending. It's following the loc. Everything is looking good. One thing I will mention sometimes, the VNAV turns itself on like it just did, actually. Look, I didn't turn that on. That should be off. Right, I don't want that turned on. If you've left it on, it won't affect this, but later if you switch it back to GPS mode, it'll, it'll be a problem, so... I turned it off. I wish it wouldn't come on automatically, but it does sometimes. Not always. I'm bringing my speed down to 140 now. Okay. And watching that everything's going where it should. Pilku is our final approach fix. We said before that we want to cross that at 1380. So. We'll make sure we're within that ballpark when we go over it, and that'll ensure that we're on the correct glide profile. Had we have been coming from the west and actually went to Okobo, what would happen is that switch, when I switched it here about five miles from the, uh, the intermediate fix, we wouldn't do that. We would actually just let the GPS track itself in because we went through the IAF, the initial approach fix, and then once we go to make our turn, once it starts like turning on to final, that's when I switch it over. Same thing, it's just this one button. Um, but if you're going via the full procedure, which would be going in this case through Okobo to Villery, it, we would have done it just as the plane was turning at Villery instead of where we did. All right, there's Pilku final. And if you have any questions about this, please leave uh, any comments and I'll be happy to try to answer it as best as I could. We said FAF crossing would be 1380 and we're over the FAF at 1380. Live profile checks. Everything's looking good. I'm going to bring my speed back now to the ref recommended by DC Designs in the book. I'll put 127 in there. That's what they recommend landing at. Um, you could do ref plus 10. It doesn't really matter. This plane flies like a dream. So I'm just going to use ref in here with the auto throttle. And I'll be ready to shut auto throttle off before touchdown. You have to shut down 
or shut off auto throttle and your autopilot two separate systems so that's why my arrow key was set up to shut off the auto throttle and I have a button on my joystick set up to shut off the uh, autopilot itself reminder minimums are 358 so we'll call it 400 feet and hopefully we see the runway by then our loke is a little bit off I do believe that DC designs can make it a little bit tighter but uh, they're, they're not quite there yet as far as this you'll, you'll notice the runway is going to be off to our our left a little bit but I don't know if that's a Microsoft problem or a, a problem with the plane sensitivity towards localizers okay auto throttles coming off and looking good runway's actually popping up in sight before minimums there's our minimums runway's in sight weather's better than expected autopilot's turned off and we'll land this thing Try not to dip too much below the slope. Manually controlling the throttle now, so had to step back from the mic to, to get there. Alright, and that's it. That's an ILS to almost mins. Usually the weather's when I set it up with this preset, it's worse than that, so. And that's how we get there. So I'm gonna put us back in the air and I'm going to show you how to do an iron nav flight based on the same stuff that I've shown you for this flight all right guys so here we are we're back we're just uh, following our track from Charlottetown to Halifax we're almost there now um, <clears throat> and we're gonna start our approach we'll we'll say we're gonna start it late normally I would have gone to this waypoint a lot faster than this but we're we're close we'll say <laughs> um, we're tracking the GPS track. All I, I have it on the GPS mode down here, and I have it on the nav mode here. So I'm going to load in my approach. To do that, I'm literally just going to center my heading bug. I'm going to select track select, which was this heading switch down here. It gives me track select in this window, meaning I'm following my, my bug to track. So whatever changes I make to the GPS won't matter. And uh, in this case, I'm going to load in the approach. We'll go back to flight plan I can select the airport load procedure that works just as well we do the RNAV Zulu 32 <clears throat> RNAV 32 Zulu and uh, because we're so close to the airport maybe I could use MBAX this time but I still think GABAP no we'll use the other one GABAP will give us a better better result I think so we'll try this one um, load the approach it's going to give us a line to it in this case, I can now select nav again once it pops up on our screen here. But it, oh, there we go. Nav, let's see if it actually intercepts the, the line that we have, right? We can look back at our, our world map and show what we got. So we load it in, Gabab. The line should take us directly to Gabab, then to Vocal, Dutza, and into the airport. Like I say, we're awful close. We were cloud surfing at 6,000 feet, so we're just at the tops. I'll put up the approach plate in the side there, and our 100 miles safe was 2,900 feet. Sector altitude is 2,200 feet, and um, the BAP has an altitude restriction of 4,000 feet. If we were cleared for the approach, I'd now go down to 4,000 feet. I'll set 4,000 in the box, and I'm doing that with my altitude bug. So 4,000 set. As you can see, the uh, the plane is banking too much. Right, it shouldn't do that, but DC Designs doesn't have the, uh, uh, a smaller limit on it, and uh, it overbanks and it, it struggles to even hold altitude. So it may not ever even follow this GPS track based on uh, the bank angle, but if I had uh, gotten myself maybe on a more gentle intercept, it would have just kind of smoothly uh, made that turn. So just keep that in mind. I think it is going to actually work out, but the bank angle is too much in this plane that needs to be dealt with. Okay, back to the uh, RNAV brief. We're doing 250 knots. There's a speed restriction of 210 knots at Kebab, so I'm going to slow us down to 200 knots right now. So I'm using my arrow keys that I set up for my speed bug, and that's changing this number. And we want it to go... 210 is the restriction. I'm going 200 because at the next waypoint, there's a restriction of 200 knots, and when things get busy, I don't want to have to have to remember that. So 
that just keeps it easy for this approach we have GPS LNAV and ALT just from uh, using this nav mode that's all we need do not turn either of these on because this one's connected to the VNAV down here it turns it on sometimes especially when you're on GPS mode and this one is the magic button I'm gonna discuss that later but I call it the magic button because it it, when you hit this, it does so many other buttons at the same time that uh, it's uh, it's not something I ever recommend using anymore. In my past videos, I said you had to use it. I thought that it was one of the things we had to do. We don't have to, and it really just sets you up for a confusing flight because it turns on systems that you don't even know are, are supposed to be turned on or off or whatever. So always leave that off, and I'll explain why at the end of this video. So we're going to Gabap. This is the... As you can see on the plate here, this would be the IAF, so I don't have to worry about anything. If we were coming from this side going to Vocal, we would have to be worried about Flight Sim wanting to send us back to Gabap. There is a button you can hit in this case, and it's down here. Oh, get rid of this plate or map. It's uh, this VEC PCD that's loc mode. So if we were outside of Vocal and we hit that, and not wanting to go back to Gabab, say, remember last time we swapped this over for the ILS, we stopped, swapped it about, about three or four miles back from the, uh, the IF. You could do the same thing with this loc mode on the uh, GPS, and it'll set you up for a final approach course. But keep that in mind if you were on the map uh, somewhere out here coming into this point, and you didn't want to go back to this point, you could hit, when you're just a few miles out, hit VEC PCD or loc mode, that switch them. I've got the most over and that would cover it. Now I'm going to decrease altitude 3,000 feet to vocal. That's what it says on the plate. I was a little bit uh, talkity there, so I'm a little bit late bringing it in, but that's fine. Our speed is under check and uh, everything's still looking good. We have lots of time to descend once we turn on final anyways. Missed approach in this case was climb to 3,000 track, 323 degrees to t as required shuttle climb. That's simple instructions. But yeah, for the RNAV approaches, do not use these AWL buttons. Just have the, the nav mode in GPS LNAV here. Use your uh, altitude step downs based on the bug settings that you put in instead of trusting the VNAV. The VNAV in this is so unreliable that um, if you watch my RNAV tutorial that I released as a separate video, the VNAV turned on automatically and um, almost sent me into the ground. It took me a little while to figure out why and it was because of that button being turned on. So just leave the ILS switches off for any air nav, unless you want to fiddle with VNAV, but like I say, I, I don't trust it. So the LNAV mins are 840 on the plate here. So we'll call that 900 feet. After vocal, we're going to Dutza now. We're going to 1800, which I did set in the box, and we're descending nicely. We are on final, so I'm going to bring our speed back to 140 now using my arrow keys and 40 I found this earlier if I zoom out I have better luck in seeing the uh, see the fix not really is there it is Dutz is showing up now finally just the, the range that you pick makes a difference we're on final speed checks landing gears coming down We're level at our signed altitude that we put from the plate, which was 1,800 feet. And our flaps are going to go full. There we go. And I'm going to engage the DLC, which is your direct lift um, control. And what that does, that puts little spoilers up on the wings, and that I think I discussed it in the last approach. Anyways. You see there's a, a VNAV track here, but we're not going to follow that. Right, I have it to ALT. It's going to go to whatever altitude I put in there. This type of approach is very important to have your uh, altimeter setting correct. And um, notice that VNAV is off. And I believe it's because we did not turn on this switch. All right, so we're just using the regular G, uh, GPS tracking like we always did, and we're adjusting the altitudes ourselves. All right, we're over Dutza. We'll go down to our MDA, which was 840, so I will set 900 feet in the uh, box for altitude bug. And we can go down to our minimums at 900 feet. 
Because we're leveling off, I'm going to maintain a little bit of speed. So I'm going to go ref plus 10. Oh, I didn't mean to hit that button. Back to 900 there. Um, I'm going to set my speed up as um, 137 instead of 127. That gives us a little bit of a buffer. So we're carrying a little bit more energy if we needed to change our, uh, our minds about, about landing. Well, that's it. We're at our minimums. Our missed approach is the uh, threshold, which you see on the, the map here. We zoom in. But I do have the lights in sight, so I, I'd safely say that we can make this approach. It almost looks VFR to me, but <laughs> I've seen much worse weather than this. But yeah, so that's it. We're level 900 feet. We're coming in, and we followed the RNAV approach to the LNAV mins. The, uh, the VNAV... L, or say LNAV, VNAV, and the LPV, they're meant to have vertical guidance. And in real world, a lot of planes do have that. The ones I've flown, actually, believe it or not, they did not have it. So I got used to doing approaches like this without autopilot. Um, disabling the autopilot now, leaving MDA, and I'm going to come in and land based on the Pappies. Um, yeah, so not all, even in real world, have that. And in this sim, so far... I don't believe that this plane is capable of, I'm just turning off my auto throttle now, is capable of uh, reliably using the VNAV, so you're just better off to use the LNAV and, and get used to just adjusting your altitude with the bug manually. And it makes it more interactive and fun anyways. Alright, let's see if we can get a nice touchdown. Ah, that was a bounce. I'd say two landings is better than one, right? Okay, that was my bad though. And we'll stop here. Didn't even have to use spoilers. Like I say, this plane flies amazing. And that covers the RNAV section. Biggest thing, like I said, do not use these switches. Especially this one. But even this one for the RNAV. You just leave it on GPS here. Turn this nav mode on to follow it in, and then adjust your altitude with the bug. And then you'll have a you'll have a great approach every time. And uh yeah. Now I want to show you something. That magic button we discussed. This bottom one. When I hit it, watch what happens. It turned this on, turn this off, turn this sideways. It would have switched this from heading to track, but we were already on track. Sometimes it turns the V nav on depending on what mode you're in. And it does stuff over here too. And it turns on this DLC um, mid-flight if, if you do that. So for all those reasons, I strongly recommend just leaving it off. Because when I go to switch things back, I can switch the landing mode back. But um, like, see, I turned the ILS off, but it went back up because this switch was enabled. And I, can turn, I can't even turn the DLC off with that switch enabled. It just takes so much control over things. Um, I can't even use loc mode. Now, like I said, there's two times you would use loc mode. First time would be if you're going to the intermediate fix of an ILS. And uh, if you wanted to use the localizer but no glide slope, and you'd be on the, the nav side of this, you'd hit this button and it would give you a loc here but no glide slope. But you have to be within range for it to actually work. The other thing is if you're doing the RNAV like what we just did, and if we were coming from that point, let me bring it up here, vocal. So GAPAP is the IAF, vocal is the IF. If we were coming from, say, this side, and we were going to vocal, when we got around here, Microsoft's going to want us to go to GAPAP and do a loop or whatever and come back in. But if you're here and you hit this LOC button, uh, sorry, where's that? V-E-C-P-C-D button right prior to going to vocal you know give it like two or three miles it'll give you a final approach course and get you lined up with final it won't care what the uh what the gps track is telling you to do at that point so it is useful it's your fail safe when you're doing an approach that goes to the if instead of the iaf because today we went to gabap i didn't have to do any of that because we went to the iaf then to the if and in right that's your your normal full procedure approach in this case so keep that in mind. I hope that was helpful. I'm not trying to uh, take up too much of your time. 
I just want to get this information out so you can get used to using this plane. All right, so I parked us here to talk about some of the bugs that are still in this plane. We're in Lukla. Never try to land here, by the way, with this plane. <laughs> well, if you do, if you actually successfully land here, um, send me a video of it. I'd love to see it. I've tried, and I've yet to succeed. I've done it with the MB339, but not with this jet. Anyways, okay, final thoughts. I love the plane. It's amazing. Um, DC Designs did a, a really good job, like, on the flight model, everything from what I would expect. And uh, it's definitely by far my most enjoyable plane in Flight Sim. And I've got a few other ones that I really like too, like uh, Caronautica, Caronado Seneca <laughs> and the uh, India Fox Echo MB339. Also amazing. But, so yes, this is, this is my top plane and I love it. But I will say that uh, the autopilot bank angle, that needs to be fixed. I'm going to put the link in the video um, that leads you to another video where you can follow his instructions and, and limit that bank angle if you choose to. However, um, I would prefer myself not to adjust the configuration files because, you know, you just, in my opinion, it makes things unstable if you, if you start messing with stuff like that. So I try to keep that as clean as possible when, when I talk about how I use my sim, right? Um, but yeah, so it just, it banks too steep. That bank angle needs to be fixed so it doesn't lose altitude when you make a turn. It's got to be able to do um, autopilot at the slower speeds instead of, you know, I don't need the autopilot to work at, at 600 knots. I need it to work at 200 knots when I'm doing an approach on a plate in bad weather. So keep that in mind. That, that would be one thing I'd love to see fixed. And I hope that DC does address it. Um, my other second biggest problem with this is literally this nav GPS switch. It's confusing. And it's only confusing because it's the opposite of the way that the switch goes. It's animated improperly or labeled improperly. So when it's on nav side, it's actually on GPS side. When it's on GPS side, it's actually on nav side. So that would be my second biggest pet peeve with the plane um, that I hope does get addressed in the future. Uh, another thing I'd like to see fix, I've got about five different mentions here. So those are the first two. The other one would be I'd like to see it tighten up its response to, you know, um, heading or localizer, or even uh, tracking a VOR or the GPS. So, in combination with where it banks too steeply, it doesn't respond the rollout fast enough. So, you know, um, if I go to line up to a GPS track and I hit my nav mode, it goes to intercept. If I'm in the wrong spot, it'll turn like, do big S turns back and forth and never intercept right because it just can't respond fast enough and I think it's it's slightly more than just the uh, the bank angle being too steep I think it's also being the uh, the response time of of how it centers those uh, um, parameters is a little slow so hopefully that's something that can look, get looked at as well um, yeah and the low can glide slope as you see when we did our low approach into Charlottetown there the um, Loke was off to the side by a bit. We were slightly under slope, and it was still fine. It wasn't even worth going around in real life. I would still use that as an acceptable approach as I was going in, just making sure I was watching it like a hawk, that everything wasn't getting any worse than where it was. Um, but I would prefer have it dead center, right? Okay, and uh, the fourth thing I'd like to mention is that magic button. Right, it's titled ACLS Turn On. Now, I showed in my last video part here, me turning it on, so I'll do it again. You see it turned on a whole pile of stuff, put us in landing mode. Now, if I want to go to, to heading, I can't do it, right? It's just, it's really no good. It turns on your ILS no matter what, which in turn sometimes turns on your VNAV, which it did. See, now that's on. Normally, that should be off. So, I leave that off. And I try to uh, just leave all the affected switches off as well, right? So keep that in mind. DC Designs, if you could, you know what would be so much better? Is uh, just do away with that switch so it doesn't automatically do everything. In fact, my fifth remark about this plane, if, if somebody from the development team ever sees it, is uh, I would suggest simplifying it. 
like we do not need a um, uh, manage speed mode versus the selected all we need is a selected right I should be able to dial this wheel and change whatever speed I want and leave it there now this time I could but if you looked in, in the video earlier on when I tried it wouldn't let me it stayed at 200 and some and I had to hit this down arrow which isn't labeled well it shows up as speed mock but the down arrow to enable me to adjust that right how is somebody gonna randomly know that so I'm sure the real world plane doesn't have anything like this so if that was just simplified to be a speed select button and that's all and that wheel always work because I don't have to change modes that would be amazing plus you know like a whole pile of other things that are simple so basically simplify this so the nav and GPS are on the correct side um, this loc button being over here doesn't really need to be over here you can you can make this be nothing or put the magic button over here and, and swap this over because what I personally think would be awesome would be keep this ILS as approach mode where it captures the uh, glide slope and everything have this be your loc mode and you can see in here it says I'm just gonna tip this up so we can see it HSD horizontal situation dis well, I don't know what, what that means with it, but anyways if that dealt with the loc mode here it would make a lot more sense because if I want to do the ILS, boom, I turn it on, right? And if I want to follow the load and get rid of the glide slope, I turn that on. And it would do that. Although, I just hit the magic button again, so that's not what it solved here. But let me see if I can show you now. It shows load, glide slope. If I hit the load mode, the glide slope goes away and it just follows the load. So wouldn't it be awesome if that button was over here, attached to the ILS system, and this magic button was over there or not even existent anymore because it's not necessary all right so those are my suggestions I do hope that uh, somebody from the development team um, comes across this video randomly and, and maybe gets to see some of this stuff because I only want the best for this plane and uh, it is my favorite with those few small fixes which I think could easily be done if I knew anything about coding I'd try to figure it out myself but um, with just those few small fixes it would be uh, top notch for navigation top notch for uh, for just flying around as is right so food for thought and uh, hopefully you enjoy my video my apologies for taking so long now let's launch off this mountain park break being released off we go DLC is engaged I want that off actually less drag let's see what happens here guys yeah right we're at more good cool as always safe flying thanks for checking it out have a good day